guys, I know I haven't done a tutorial in a while but I've actually been away for a little bit and once I did get back I decided to spend some more time restarting the format of this tutorial just to spice things up a little bit. Feel free to let me know whether you like it or not. Now, in the spirit of coming back with a bang... Whatever, in, in the spirit of coming back with a bang, it is all going to be about explosions today. Have you ever gone to the movies to watch a cheap action flick just to find out there were no explosions in it? It's like going to the aquarium and there's no fish in it. Everyone loves explosions. Unfortunately, on YouTube, most of the explosions look like this. Now, with just a little bit of extra work, you can make your explosions look like this. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create great looking explosions in Adobe After Effects with nothing more than some basic stock footage. First film your base footage. I have a shot here of me doing a horrible job of pretending to be hit by an explosion. Then film another clip of jumping with some force away from the center of explosion as if being hit by the shockwave. Feel free to take a run up to the jump, we will cut that out anyways. Make sure this footage sits on top of your base footage and trim it down to line the jump up as best as possible with the moment of the explosion. Now I can see some twitching during the cut, especially in the foliage of the trees and the blue bucket, so I'm going to mask out only the lower left part of the jump footage and give the mask a little bit of feathering. There, that's a lot better. It is okay if this is not 100% perfect. One trick to add realism to your explosion is to add a few elements into your shot that will appear to be flung away by the shockwave. For this, I deliberately placed a few wood pieces, some boxes and a bucket in the scene. I then filmed myself flinging these elements out of the way one by one with some fishing line. Make sure that all of these clips sit on top of your base and jump footage and mask the elements out individually. Animate the mask path property to make the mask follow the object precisely when it is being flung around. It does pay off to spend a bit of time on this and do it cleanly. These little things will add greatly to the final effect. Next, line up these clips with the moment you want the explosion to occur, so it looks like they are all being pushed away by the shockwave. If the clips do not quite seem to sit right in the scene, in my case they are a little bit bright since the lighting changed slightly while I was filming, you can tweak this by adding a curse adjustment. I'm just going to lower the brightness of some of the elements a little bit. It looks a bit silly now since the original objects remain in place while also being flung around. To fix this all you need is a shot of your scene without anything in it. I have a simple picture I took here. Drag this image below all your moving elements and mask out the area where the moving objects are. Ensure that this clip starts exactly when all the other elements become visible. I'm also going to lower the brightness a little just to make it sit a bit better in the shot. That actually looks quite good. Precompose all layers by selecting them all and then going to Layer Precompose. Call this new composition Base Footage Comp, select to move all attributes into the new composition and hit OK. Now it's finally time to add the explosion. For this I'm using stock footage from the Action Essentials 2 package by Video Copilot, but you can find free clips online and I've put a link into the description of this video, so make sure to check that out. Drag your stock footage into the composition and make sure the explosion occurs at the correct time at the correct position. I usually like to trim out the first few frames of these clips just to have the explosion appear a little bit more instantaneously with a little bit more power. Next, mask out any elements that would be in front of your explosion. I'm lowering the opacity for the explosion layer temporarily just so I can see what's underneath it. Then I'm going to mask out the tree trunk and a bit of the lower part of the explosion just to make it look like it's actually sitting on the ground. Remember to switch your mask to subtractive to remove these elements from your layer and then add a little bit of feathering. Next, add a glow effect to your explosion. I like to increase the glow radius to around 200 and I will also add a hue saturation effect just to bring the saturation of the whole thing down a little bit. I want the stock footage to fit as best as possible into the scene. With that done, select all your layers and pre-compose them. I'm going to call this comp Explosion Base Comp, then hit OK. Next, add lighting to your explosion. I'm not going to cover this in too much detail here. If you do not know how to do this, go and watch my muzzle flash tutorial which explains this in great detail. Just make sure that the intensity of the lighting suits the intensity of your explosion. 
To give our explosion a bit more power, we are going to add a shockwave effect. Create a new adjustment layer by selecting Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Any effects that you apply to an adjustment layer will apply to all of the layers beneath it. Rename the layer to Shockwave and add a bulge effect. Move the bulge center to the center of your explosion. Bring up your horizontal and vertical bulge radius to as far as you want your Shockwave to reach. We're now going to create a track mat for our adjustment layer. Go to Layer, New, Solid. Ensure the color is set to black and give your solid a useful name. I will call mine Shockwave Mat. This new solid needs to sit directly above our adjustment layer. Add an iris wipe to the new solid. Increase the iris points to the maximum, move the iris center to the center of the explosion and increase the feathering to around 200. We're now going to add a wide rim to the opening of the iris. This wide rim will define the area where the bulge effect of the adjustment layer and thus our shockwave will be visible. Add a colorama effect to the solid. Set the input to alpha and the output to gray ramp. Adjust the color to be a white ring by dragging the white marker to the bottom of the color wheel. Finally, to get rid of the hole in the middle of the iris, enable the option Change Empty Pixels. Now we need to animate this ring which represents our shockwave. I will again lower the opacity for a moment so I can see the footage underneath. Enable the stopwatch for the outer radius property and animate it to go from small to very big in about 10 frames just in time with our explosion. Trim the layer down so it starts exactly when the explosion hits. Next, animate the opacity of the layer to fade it out as the wide ring gets bigger. Finally, set the track mat option for the adjustment layer to luma mat. Now the visibility of the bulge effect is determined by the brightness of the animated ring in our shockwave mat. One last thing I will do is to mask out only the upper part of the adjustment layer to make the shockwave sit on top of the ground rather than to go through it. Again, pre-compose all layers. I will call this comp Explosion Comp. To add the camera shake, we're going to make use of expression controls. You can learn all about these helpful tools in my expression controls tutorial. Select the slider effect and apply it to the layer. Reveal the position property of the layer by pressing P when the layer is selected and then ALT click on the stopwatch to enable expressions. Type wiggle, open bracket, 18, comma and then drag the pick whip icon to the slider expression control we added before. This will insert the value of the slider into the expression. Now type close brackets, semicolon and click outside of the expression editor. This expression says to randomly alter the position of our layer 18 times a second by the amount specified by the slider. Now we can animate our slider from 0 to 50 when the explosion hits and then back to 0 within about 15 frames. This will cause the footage to shake violently when the explosion hits and then slowly subside. To get rid of the black borders around the footage, simply increase the scale a little bit. I'm going to set it to about 110%. And once you've done that, your explosion is complete. Hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and feel free to leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. Until next time, I will see you later. Hmm? Oh shit. Thank you.